Our next speaker is Travis Hoban from FTSI, and he's going to talk to us about branch optimization. Thank you. Everybody hear me okay? All right, so I knew I'd be the final speaker, and I figured what can help keep people awake more than a dinosaur? So, <laughs> I travel a lot for my work, and so recently I was on a plane, and one of the movies and that, that they had to offer on that terrible in-flight entertainment was the latest Jurassic Park movie. And I know these movies are about dinosaurs coming back to life, but I just want to know how this movie franchise keeps coming back to life. I mean, five movies with essentially the same plot um, is probably enough. And they really do all have the same plot, and it goes something like this. So despite all the human and natural forces trying to uh, destroy them, the dinosaurs survive and come back for the next movie. Um, what does this have to do with credit unions and branches? So I, uh, today, many pundits are talking about how credit unions, at least traditional brick and mortar credit unions, are dinosaurs who are facing extinction. And um, just like the old Jurassic Park movies, uh, this is the same story that's been told over and over again. Um, and it always ends the same way with credit unions uh, surviving and finding a way. Uh, one of my favorite, favorite uh, lines from the first Jurassic Park movie is um, by this guy. I don't remember his name, but he's pretty darn entertaining. Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum, thank you. And he says, life finds a way. And credit unions also find a way. In fact, credit unions, they don't just survive despite uh, their adversity. They're, they were born from it. So this is the first credit union in the United States. I know, some of you still have branches that look like this. Um, Anthony can help you out with that. Thank you. <laughs> so this, this credit union was formed for uh, French-speaking immigrants who were facing anti-French sentiment, and they couldn't get loans from banks due to that anti-French prejudice. So since that time, it's only gotten worse, right? And you all, you know, you know the history. The Great Depression, big challenge for credit unions. 9,000 banks failed, not a single credit union failed. Credit unions find a way. Um, whoops, sorry about that. Um, obviously beyond just market conditions, there's regulatory pressure, lawsuits from banks. In, uh, in 76, credit unions lost a court battle, restricting shared draft accounts, and then in 1990, uh, again, uh, they lost a, a court battle restricting memberships. Um, today, credit unions are facing a lot of uh, market conditions. Consumers are moving away from traditional brick and mortar branches. Um, yet, at the same time, credit unions find a way. Um, today, I'd like to share a few examples of some credit unions who are finding their way. What is that way? Um, you know, there's if, if I look at probably 100 or so credit unions that I've worked with, uh, executive teams that I've talked to, there's, there's a few things that kind of rise to the top. Those credit unions that are thriving, uh, despite the, the challenges they're facing, um, there's probably two things I think that, that typically rise to the top. One of those being they're, they're focused on accelerating their digital, and the other piece is transforming their physical. Now I'm here to talk today about the transforming the physical. Um, but the innovator in me can't help but talk just briefly about that other piece of the puzzle, which is accelerating the digital. And, and I guess the one thing I would say is, we're going to talk a lot about branches today, and we've been talking a lot about branches, but if we don't put an emphasis on transforming our digital channels, um, streamlining our infrastructure and our processes, removing friction, uh, adding uh, digital lending offerings, uh, online account openings, then it won't matter what we do to our physical branches because we won't be able to attract or retain members. But that's for another day. We'll talk about transforming the physical. Uh, the first example of a branch, or the first example of a credit union that I wanna, I wanna share is, is not from California. I'm sorry, I know that pretty much every good idea comes from California, I'm aware of that. Um, Disney, Apple computers, my personal favorite, in and out burger. Uh, I know, I don't look like a guy who likes a lot of burgers. My chisel physique and all, but it's because I, I have my double-double protein style, so. Um, 
but yeah, we, we, know, we know California has a lot of good ideas. Um, that being said, I'm willing to listen to ideas from outside of our state, um, even if they are from Portland. So the, for the first credit union I want to talk about is Rivermark Credit Union of Portland, Oregon. They face some challenges, similar to what credit unions have been facing over the ages, uh, and similar to what you all are facing right now. Um, they face their challenges and approach their kind of next step in evolution um, by, instead of making gut decisions, turning to a good source, which was their members. They did some surveys and they did uh, uh, focus groups. And from those surveys and focus groups, um, a few things, uh, they, they came up with a few priorities. Uh, one of those priorities was better conversations. The other one was access and convenience. And the third one I thought was kind of interesting, bring, bringing the cool. They wanted to bring the cool. I guess that whole keep Portland weird thing uh, didn't translate over to the credit union space. So I want my credit union weird, said no member ever. Um, Rivermark's approach was to basically blow up their whole business model, um, to start from scratch, figure out what they could do to meet those member needs. Um, this was, this was the result. Smaller branch footprint, more intimate, easier to navigate, no teller line. Technology that enables their members to do transactions on their own or via assisted self-service. Vestibules that allow them to offer extended hours through, those, through that technology. Um, they actually extended hours from 8 to 8, Monday through Friday, and 10 to 6 on Saturdays. And um, they also improved their conversations by removing a lot of the operational tasks. There's no vault in these branches. Uh, there's no dual control necessary. Um, the tellers don't have to focus on counting and balancing to the penny. They're having heads up transactions. And so the conversations are improving. Um, they also added, I mentioned adding more access and convenience. So they, this is one example of a smaller branch that they built. This is literally a branch in a box. Five by five foot, or 10 by 10 foot space that they lease for $500 a month in a strip mall parking lot. Put in an assisted self-service machine and Voila, branch in a box. It was a big gamble for them to take this step, but they knew that if they didn't, that they wouldn't be around in 10 years or so. As far as results, so in the first 18 months, they had a 60% growth in membership. That was not through acquisitions. That was through the added convenience and the competitive advantage that they gained through additional branch locations and through extended hours and just through having better conversations. 27% uh, increase in loans, and in loan applications, and a 2x increase in in-branch sales. So referrals, essentially. Now, they'll admit that not all of this success was due to their branch and the technology that they implemented, but it was due to the great cultural shift that they had gone through. And that shift was enabled through the technology and the branch design. Um, Rivermark is finding a way. My next example comes from right here in the sunny, the state of sunny California, Financial Partners Credit Union. Anybody know a guy named Nader? <laughs> Susan, I'll let him know you clap for him. <laughs> so Financial Partners faced uh, some similar challenges. Um, they identified the, the one key for their success was they needed to have better conversations in order to understand the goals of their members so that they could offer advice and help them meet their goals. They determined that if they helped their members meet their goals, that their members would then be loyal. Simple enough. Um, their, their approach to this was what they called reimagining the teller line and reimagining other pieces of their business. Um, starting from scratch, figuring out what we can do to eliminate the operational overload that their tellers were facing. Uh, and also, their, their, their members are spending too much time standing in line. So what can we do? We need to implement some technologies and change our branches up so that we can have better conversations, reduce operational overload. Their first iteration was a branch in a hospital, fully self-service, open 24 hours. Um, the, the machines that they put in were full self-service machines. Um, 
It's a very small footprint, but it appealed to the uh, high, we'll say high income and, and busy schedules of those people who worked at the hospital. Um, unfortunately, they had some struggles at that branch because it was fully self-service and a good portion of the time their members would need assistance or want assistance with a transaction, um, they left disappointed. So financial partners took a different approach and they added some video tellers and everything changed. They were able to provide the level of service that their members expected. They still were able to offer self-service to those members who wanted it, but they could offer the more advanced uh, assisted self-service when it was needed. Um, again, extending hours, they have two physical FTE at that branch that are there longer than traditional, a traditional banking day. Uh, and they're able to, again, serve that demographic that can't bank during traditional, traditional hours. Um, from a results standpoint, the conversations have gotten better, definitely gotten better. If we look at some things related to conversations, so 32% increase in referrals and a 5x increase in conversations. They now have 23 video tellers at 17 branches. If you had 17 branches, how many FTE would you have to have staffing those branches? They've really got some efficiencies, 54% decrease in costs at these branches where they have video tellers implemented. Cost to build is factored into that, of course, um, but operating costs as well, as well have gone down. Not to mention, of course, the increase in improved service and the conversations. They've, they've met their goal in increasing conversations and improving those conversations. So financial partners is finding a way. My next example comes from lovely Lubbock, Texas. Anybody ever been to Lubbock? All right, a few of you. Those who haven't, don't worry. I'm going to show you the best thing about Lubbock, Texas. Te Texas Tech Credit Union. Well, they do have actually a windmill museum too. So if you're into that thing, I guess it could be a cool place to visit. This is what Texas Tech's branches used to look like. This actually isn't that long ago. They built this branch just a few years ago, but they realized that the way they were doing business was antiquated. Their membership was antiquated. Their infrastructure was antiquated. Their technology was antiquated. And they realized that if they didn't do something, they wouldn't be around in 10 years. So they went to the board and they said, I know we just built this branch two years ago and we spent over $2 million on it, but we need to tear it down to the studs and rebuild it. They took the risk, it paid off. This was the branch they built. It's beautiful, obviously. Universal member service reps greet them at the door, greet members at the door. If they need to do a high value transaction, they take care of them, loan application, account opening, Anything along those lines that has a higher value. Lower value transactions are handled through self-service or assisted self-service. No joke, I was at this branch and there was this 75-year-old woman sitting there just hanging out. And I thought, maybe she's lost. <laughs> I went up to her and I said, hi, how are you? I'm just curious, you bank here? Yeah, yeah, I do. Well, have you used the machine? Yes, I've used the machine. What do you think? It's so cool, I feel so hip. <laughs> it blew my mind as far as, uh, you know, there went my age discrimination. I, I no longer think that a certain technology is right for a certain person. Um, uh, Texas Tech also built a, well, kind of following financial partners lead, they built a, a, a micro branch in a hospital. That micro branch in the hospital now does more lending and more transactions than their main branches because there's a group there. And, they said, and what Texas Tech says is it just word spread like wildfire. Once they knew that they could bank extended hours on their terms, they, they, they just flocked to us. So it's their highest producing branch now. Uh, appeals to that busy demographic and very affluent demographic. The results, amazing. 54% gro uh, growth in assets, 37% growth in memberships, 53% growth in loans. Um, Texas Tech is finding a way, even in Lubbock, Texas. So you've probably seen a few themes here that, have, that are starting to float to the top. Increase in access and convenience, extended hours, smaller branch footprints that help you get more efficient, better conversations. Um, but there is one final piece of advice that all of the executives at these credit unions wanted me to 
make sure I convey to you all today. And that's that, though a particular technology or branch footprint or uh, branch design work for them, that doesn't mean it will work for your credit union. You have to find ways to, to gain deep member empathy, as River Mark would put it, reimagine uh, your business model, um, determine how you're going to approach that in your own way. Because though credit unions will always find a way to evolve and survive extinction, um, they'll all have to find their own way. So, thank you.